Hello! Today we'll be looking at dissipative forces and in particular the example of the damped pendulum. So we'll be solving for generalised forces and the corresponding equations of motion for our system. So firstly, dissipative forces are forces of such nature that energy is lost from a system when motion takes place. Of course, energy is in general conserved, but it is lost from the degrees of freedom of interest into heat or radiation. So the force can be represented by F equals A, which is a function of position and time and the magnitude of our velocity. So depending on the value of the index N, we have different types of dissipative forces. So the three main types of dissipative forces you need to know are the dry frictional forces, the viscous forces, and the high velocity friction. So we have our dry friction and our high velocity friction. But today we're focusing on the pendulum, so we need to know about viscous forces. So here, the frictional force increases as the first power of the relative speed between the surfaces and opposes the relative motion. Viscous friction is important for wet surfaces at small relative velocities. So, there's the dissipation of forces uh, as an introduction. So now the Lagrangian method requires us to find the generalised forces corresponding to the different coordinates that we have used to characterise the degrees of freedom of the motion. There are two general ways to determine the generalised forces. One is to calculate them in Cartesian coordinates and convert them to generalised coordinates. And second is to use the power function. So we're going to do both in this video today. So for any force that we know in Cartesian coordinates, we can find the generalised force by using the definition of the generalised coordinates in terms of the coordinates in which the force is known. So the definition of the generalised force is Qj is equal to the sum of i, Fi dotted with the partial derivative of r respect to Qj, where Q is our generalised forces. So to find this generalised force, First, we have to determine the dissipative force in Cartesian coordinates and the full transformation between the Cartesian coordinates and the generalised coordinates. So, now let's look at the damped pendulum. So, it has a length L, okay, and we're going to use the angle theta and the vertical to describe the single degree of freedom. Okay, so the position of the bob will be given by x is equal to L sine theta and Y is equal to negative L cosine theta. Okay, and so differentiate to find the velocities. So X dot will equal L cosine theta theta dot and then Y dot is equal to L sine of theta theta dot. Okay. So the viscous force opposes the direction of motion and it is proportional to the velocity, as we saw before. So therefore, the dissipative forces are f of x, or sorry, f sub x, is equal to negative a, and then we have x, which was l cosine theta theta dot, and then we have fy. Okay, and that's equal to negative a, and then plug in our velocity, which is L sine theta, theta dot, like so. Okay, so we also need the partial derivatives for the transformation. So we have dx by d theta, okay, is equal to L cosine of theta and we have partial derivative of y respect to theta okay which is a generalized coordinate and that's equal to l sine of theta all right so to calculate generalized force we have f of theta it's simply the sum of our dissipative forces okay f of x 
Okay, and then we multiply that, of course, by dx by d theta plus fy dy by d theta. Okay, simply using our definition of the generalized force. Alright, and when we do that, we get, so do that and we have f of theta, okay, is equal to negative a l squared cosine squared of theta, theta dot, and then minus a l squared sine squared theta, theta dot. Cosine squared and sine squared will cancel and we have that f of theta, a generalized force, is given by negative a l squared theta dot. So the great advantage of using the potential instead of the generalized forces directly was that the definition of the partial derivative took care of all the heavy lifting involved in going from one system of coordinates to the other. It turns out that one can use an analogous quantity called the power function to do the same thing. It's also called the dissipation function. So like for the potential, the power function for various simple forms of forces can simply be written down and used. In analogy with the potential, we define the power function such that the force on particle i in the x direction, written like that, is equal to the partial derivative of p with respect to x dot i. And similarly, for the other directions and particles, we just put uh, y or z. Of course, not all forces can be written in this way, but many dissipative forces can. So let's write out the generalized force using the standard formula. So qj is equal to sub so i, and then we have fi, as we saw before, no different. Okay, we can rewrite that as the sum of i, and then we still have i. Okay, but using the cancellation of dots, we have the partial derivative of vi with respect to q dot j is the same as this partial derivative here. Okay, this then can be written as the sum of i of the partial derivative of p, okay, using our power function vi, and then we multiply that by partial derivative of vi with respect to q dot j. So this is the chain rule, and you can see this is simply the partial derivative of p with respect to q dot j. So qj, we find that our generalized force is the partial derivative of our dissipation function with respect to q dot j. Okay, excellent. So finally, let's conclude our example on the damped pendulum by finding the equations of motion. So the viscous force, as we looked at before, was F is equal to negative A V, okay? So the power function is therefore just uh, differentiate, or sorry, we're actually integrating here, aren't we? A V squared, and that's equal to a negative a half A, and then L theta dot squared is simply the velocity, okay? We find our the, the position of our bob, and then we differentiate with respect to time. Okay, so that's our dissipation function by integrating our viscous force. And therefore, obviously, our generalized force, f of theta, is equal to dp by d theta dot. And that's going to equal negative a l squared theta dot, as we saw before. So let's combine the results for the power function 
with the Lagrangian for the pendulum. So, the Lagrangian is t minus v. Okay, and if you remember from my previous video on finding equations of motion for a, a simple pendulum, we found that the Lagrangian was a half ml squared theta dot squared plus g m l cosine of theta. Okay, if you haven't seen that, go and watch the video. But anyways, the Lagrange's equations, including the power function, okay, obviously we have the rate of change of the partial derivative of L with respect to theta dot, minus dl by the theta, and then that's equal to our generalized forces, okay, nc theta. And that's, of course, the same as saying dp by d theta dot. Okay, excellent. So if you do the simple calculus, uh, the equations yield m l squared theta double dot plus g m l sine theta. Okay, which is of course uh, that would equal zero if it was a normal uh, pendulum without the damped forces, but instead we have equaling negative l squared theta dot. Okay, if we take the small angle limit of this equation, all right, theta dot is equal to negative g over l theta minus a over m theta dot. Okay, and that is the equation of motion for damped linear oscillator. So in this example, we have included all of the forces that we could have included in the Lagrangian, leaving only the dissipative force to be included in the power function. Of course, one could have included non-dissipative forces in the power function as well, but one must be careful not to include the same force twice. So it is generally a good idea to include as much as possible in the Lagrangian, leaving only the forces that cannot be included in the Lagrangian for the power function. This has the added advantage of one can still look at the Lagrangian for the first integrals if the power function does not depend on a particular coordinate. Okay, and there is my video on the basic introduction to dissipative forces, uh, looking at a basic example of the damped pendulum. So in further videos, we'll look at this topic in more complicated, uh, well, using complicated examples, and we'll look at it in more detail. So I'll see you in the next couple of videos.